Good afternoon, everybody. This is Adrienne Montgomery with ERP VAR. Thank you so much for taking time out to join us today. We're going to be talking about Acumatica and the Acumatica Manufacturing Edition, uh, how to manage all the production automation through Acumatica and shipping and payment automation as well. And I'm so pleased to be joined by Jessica Gadboy over at Acumatica. She's a pre-sales engineer and she focuses on the Acumatica Manufacturing Edition along with a few of the other editions over there. Uh, and Matt St. John, sales executive over at Starship. He'll be talking about automating the shipping within Starship and how that in Acumatica and how all that uh, integrates with the Manufacturing Edition. And Patty will be talking about automating the payment side of things with level three credit card card processing and lowering your credit card processing rate. A little bit about the companies here. Acumatica, you probably are all aware, is a uh, leading cloud ERP. They deliver adaptable cloud and mobile technology, and they have a unique all-inclusive user licensing model, and it enables complete real-time view of your business anytime, anywhere. Uh, they offer their Acumatica cloud ERP through a network of partners across the country. And they exclusively offer through this network of partners who are certified to implement, support, and train you on Acumatica. And they include financials, distribution, manufacturing, project accounting, and CRM. Those are your, their core competencies. And they're the only one true cloud ERP platform designed for mid-sized customers. Starship was founded in 1987, and they partner with dozens of parcel and LTL carriers, such as DHL, FedEx, Holland, USPS, UPS, YRC, OnTrack, Pitt, Ohio, and many others. Uh, they have an integration, a very strong integration with Acumatica. Uh, they have been working with Dynamics GP for years and years and years, Sage, QuickBooks, SAP Business One, Epicor, and Cispro. They also have integrations with Amazon, eBay, Magento, Shopify, and WooCommerce. So you can visit their website right here if you have any more information you're looking to find about automated shipping. And then APS Payments, they offer flexible, integrated payment solutions for every business. They're a full-service merchant services provider. They're trusted by thousands of merchants daily to process payments. And they have a somewhat new offering with Acumatica. It's called Click to Pay, and Patty's going to review that as well. Uh, so thank you all for joining us today. A little bit about the workflow that we're, we'll review. We're going to be talking about how an order comes into Acumatica and how that order is assembled on the shop floor and how you can track all the uh, aspects of the order through the Acumatica Manufacturing Edition, procurement and production, and how all the details of the order go back into Acumatica where Starship picks up the dimensional weight of the package, the, all the rules of the shipment going to out to the customer, We'll pin the tracking keys over to the order so that customer service can answer any questions. If there's e-commerce integrated with it, the, the, um, the tracking information will be reflected in the e-commerce area. And APS Payments will be talking about integrated payments with Acumatica and getting the lowest credit card processing rate using all of the information about the customer that's stored in Acumatica. And then I just wanted for everybody, everybody a heads up, we're going to be having a complimentary webinar next Tuesday, February 25th. We hope you join us. You can sign up on ERPVAR.com, going to the consultant events section of the menu. And um, we have a special guest speaker, Jeff Ashley, Axiomatica VP of Partner Programs and Strategy. We'll be talking about the five key takeaways from Axiomatica Summit. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and let Jessica get started. Thank you so much, Jessica. Uh, well, thank you for having me, everybody. I'm very excited to be here today to share with you really Acumatica's manufacturing edition, but what makes it so powerful and a differentiator in the market today. Uh, like I said, just a couple of setup slides here, and then we'll dive right into the demo. 
Uh, but when we take a look at Acumatica's manufacturing edition, these are some of the most common industries we tend to play in. Uh, you know, discrete manufacturing is typically our strong suit. We also play very well in the batch process manufacturing space. And we also have re recently brought on Batch Master. Um, if you're familiar with that software product, they are going to be extending much more of the process manufacturing capabilities for us. Uh, so electronics, uh, industrial machinery, medical devices, food and beverage, cosmetics, those are some of the industries where you'll see Acumatica really tends to shine. Now, as far as what types of manufacturing do we support, uh, these are just a few examples of those manufacturing types. I'll take you through an example today uh, using something like a make-to-order scenario, but make-to-stock, engineer-to-order, project-centric, job shop, batch, repetitive, these are all uh, instances or, I guess, environments within manufacturing that Acumatica can absolutely support. Now, I'm going to dive right into the demo from here. This is just really how I wanted to tee up where we'd be going. So let me take you over into the software, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you that have seen Acumatica before, uh, this would be me logging into Acumatica. I would have my home page here. Uh, this happens to be a customer view dashboard that I'm looking at, but each role within Acumatica is separated by securities and permissions. So, for example, if I'm you know, a production manager that's working out on the production dashboard, I might have a dashboard that looks something like this. Oops, that's actually not the one I wanted. I want my manufacturing dashboard here. So instead of me seeing, you know, orders out there that need to be shipped and what our AR looks like at this point in time, maybe I'm more concerned with assemblies that need to be built. Uh, what does our capacity look like across our work centers or our lines right now? So you'll certainly have dashboards to act as a home base for anybody that is using Acumatica, not just those on the manufacturing side of the house. Uh, now, before I take you through a workflow example using Acumatica Manufacturing, I do like to start by just introducing, introducing you to the bill of materials in Acumatica. Uh, there's really two core modules. Uh, when I say core modules of Manufacturing Edition, that's anybody that purchases Acumatica Manufacturing, you're going to get bill of materials, and you're also going to get production. We have several optional modules like MRP, uh, Material Requirements Planning, our Product Configurator, a Manufacturing Estimating Module, but those ones are optional, so we only ask you to pay for them if, of course, you are using them. So this can be a really a, a puzzle piece situation where you start with what you need and then you can build modules on top of that. Now, I'll take you into my bill of materials here, and you can see I have a number of bills sitting out there, and I'll just pull one from the bottom of my list. And bills of materials in Acumatica. The reason that I like to start here in a demonstration format is because seeing the bill really helps us understand how we are going to use this information on the production side. Uh, and actually, let me see if I have a bill that has a couple more operations in there. It might be more fun to look at. There we go. A little bit more exciting. Okay. So in this example, you can see that we have uh, a Keurig. Happens to just be a generic demo item in there, but this would be the finished good that we are building. Within Acumatica, you can have multiple bills for the same item. Maybe you have multiple facilities, uh, different design specs. You could have multiple bills, but you can also have multiple revisions against that bill. So if I, I don't know, swap out a certain component part that is no longer being utilized, I might create a revision B, throw a new effectivity date in there, and we can store that history, go back and use it at any time. Uh, we do also support full engineering change control. So if you actually wanted to send this bill uh, through a change request process, get that approved, create a change order, get that approved, we also do the full engineering change control inside of Acumatica. Now, for the center of the screen here, these would be our operations or our routing steps. In other words, what do our shop floor workers need to do in order to create this finished good? And in this example, it's an assembly step followed by an inspection step. Uh, you might have 40 operations in here. If you make, I don't know, doors or cabinets and you're doing uh, the design and then the cutting and the sanding, all of those different, different operations can be broken out 
but then you can also do things like layer your costs against those operations. So if every time I do an assembly, for example, in Work Center 10, we would like to charge a standard labor rate, I can go ahead and set that up here at the Work Center level. Now, beyond just the operation, the timing, the costs, the labor, you're also going to see down at the bottom of my screen that these are a few areas, uh, the materials, steps, tools, overhead, and outside processes that are also related to the operation that I have highlighted. So for example, when I am in this assembly operation, I can see all of the components or materials that would be needed. These could be sub-assemblies, so we absolutely do support multi-level bills of materials uh, and nested bills as well. If I go over to the inspection step, just take a look that I don't necessarily have any materials tied to that step. Uh, so we can, again, with our costs, with our material issues and releases, we can start to get very granular if we would like to. Um, I also would like to make the comment that if you are a very simple manufacturer and you do just have a uh, one step, and maybe it's called assembly, maybe it's just called manufacturing, and you're really doing more of a, a kitting type of process, absolutely fine. You can get as simple or as complex as you would like to when it comes to Acumatica manufacturing. Now what I'll do is I'll take you through an example. Uh, we'll use this one right here. It's a, a bearing unit that I have set up. And why don't we walk through an example where we place that on a sales order and then we can actually go out and manufacture it. And I do have, I should have a sales order sitting out here waiting for us to go ahead, go ahead and do some production against that. So if you are in a make to order environment, then your workflow in Acumatica might look something like this. Uh, maybe you have your reps or your sales representatives entering sales orders, which is the part that I've already done here. So we see one sales order with one line item on it. Pretty basic. But if you look down at the bottom of the screen, I can see that I don't have any of these finished goods on hand to sell to this customer. So I need to go out and do some production. And you can actually see that this line item has already automatically been marked for production. Acumatica can recognize when you do need to go out and build that. Or maybe if I needed to purchase the finished good or the components, I could mark for a PO instead. We are going to go out and create the production order. Now you're watching me do this in what I will call a one-off way today. I'm going from one sales order to one production order. If I wanted to do this in a batch process or an automated process, we have a screen called our Create Production Orders screen, which would look at all of the sales orders out there that are ready to have production orders created for them. Now if you look, this is production order 84 that has been created to satisfy the demand of sales order 4984. So on my production order now, no dual entry is required. I have everything that has been carried over from the initial sales order for me. I see the finished good we need to create. I see the quantity. I'm also going to see that bill of materials that we started with. Uh, this is the default bill for this finished good. If I wanted to modify the revision, uh, maybe make a revision B instead of a revision A, I can make those changes at this point in time. You will also have, and all manufacturers that use Acumatica Manufacturing will have an audit trail of their production. So when I look at this event history tab, it is showing me everything against this production order that has occurred at this, or up until this point in time. So all we've done so far is create it. Uh, when I actually go through the process of releasing that order to the shop floor, that's just saying we're done planning, we're ready to start building it, I see a new line item appears that constantly keeps track of that audit trail for us. Really nice for production managers to be able to go back here and see, you know, Jimmy overissued way too many materials on this order, what is going on here? Maybe we need to go have a word with uh, Jim on the shop floor. Now over here on the totals tab, this is going to be, let me zoom a bit, this is going to be a picture of your job costs. So over on the left, based on that bill that we started with, here are all of our planned production costs. As we go through and perform production, we are going to start to capture our actual manufacturing costs which will allow us to generate a variance for production if there is one in real time 
which I can check as a production manager at any point. Now let's have a quick discussion about how do we capture that actual labor. There are a couple of ways to do this in Acumatica. One is called back flushing. If you are familiar with the term back flushing, it essentially just means here are the $185 worth of components we planned on spending on this assembly. We know we always need the inlet. We know we always need the reservoir. Let's just back flush those materials instead of having to create a physical transaction to issue those materials. Assuming what we plan for is what we did. That's called a back flush, which results in no variance, right? What you plan for is what you did, so you would get a, a balanced out variance. You can also create material or labor issues in Acumatica or material or labor transactions. So I, if I would like to create a transaction that actually says I used one reservoir, I used one inlet, and I would like to tell the system manually that this is what I used, enter the quantities, I can go ahead and do that. I could even do that from a scanning device. So we do have full shop floor data collection integrated from a scanner or the mobile app. Um, Acumatica has a mobile app available in the Apple Store or in the Android Store, so you could download it right now if you would like to. Um, and once you have an Acumatica instance, you can log in from that mobile app and you could even capture your material and your labor transactions right from that app. Now, I'm going to use the back flush example here. So we'll say, you know, that $185, $185 of materials, the labor that we planned on doing, uh, we are just going to simply move this operation or complete that operation. I always thought move was kind of a funny term, but what it means is you are just moving from one operation to the next. If it was that first example I started with where I had an inspection on there, I could maybe say I'm done with assembly and I'm moving on to inspection. In this example that we used, I do just have the one operation. So all that's going to be required is this one move transaction to flush out the materials, flush out the labor, and assume that this work has been completed. Okay. Um, so yes, we did complete the quantity of one. If I maybe had a quantity of 10 on this order, but I only completed five, I could also flush the cost out for those first five units and come back and do the other five later on. So you could do a partial uh, production as well. Now, when I create this move transaction, we are going to see that our production order actually does get completed. Like I mentioned, because we moved out of uh, the only operation in this example, we will see, and we completed the total quantity complete on there as well, uh, we will see that the status of this production order has changed to completed. I will also see under my event history, all of those costs that have come in and the transactions that have come in from the move. So if you remember, we were back flushing those materials. So yes, even though I created a move, it back flushed my material costs for me. So now I have access to the material transaction that has actually been created against my general ledger. Uh, we all know ERP at the end of the day, uh, the general ledger and the debits and credits is why we're all here. So mind, of course, that that's all happening behind the scenes. And then over here on my totals, I'm going to see that my uh, planned are equaling my actuals, which is giving me no variance because I did a back flush here. Now, in the essence of time, I had about 20 minutes that I wanted to spend with you on this demonstration today. So that's really the majority of what I have time to go through. Um, the last thing I just want to highlight though is what I mentioned earlier on in the demonstration that we do have many optional modules. So material requirements planning, if you're looking to understand you know, exactly when you need to purchase, this would be a screen that's showing you each one of those uh, components out there that needs to be purchased exactly when you need to do it. Uh, for any sub-assemblies or work orders, it would show you exactly when you need to manufacture those. And then you can create POs and work orders directly from this screen. Uh, we do also have full advanced planning and scheduling. So in other words, uh, finite scheduling and infinite scheduling. So we can help you schedule your shop floor at the work center level, at the machine level, and even all the way down to the tool level at this point in time. 
Now, there's a lot more that we could show you with Manufacturing Edition. We could certainly spend uh, hours here today, but just in the essence of allowing everybody to get a chance up at bat, um, I'm going to send it over to our next presenter, but please let Adrian know if you're interested in a follow-up demo. Uh, we'd be happy to learn a little bit more about your business and uh, create a demo that is tailored exactly to your organization. Uh, so Adrian, I will pause on my portion of the demo and we can send it over to Matt, who is our next presenter. All right, thank you, Jessica. And let me just share my screen here with everyone. Really appreciate everyone taking time out of uh, your day for joining our webinar. We really do appreciate it. And again, my name is Matt St. John, one of the sales executives here at V Technologies. And today we're going to go over Starship. Uh, as Jessica just mentioned, this is going to be a brief, you know, kind of 30,000 foot overview. Uh, kind of go to go through this rather quickly, but you know, please feel free to reach out uh, if you'd like to schedule a more one-on-one -on -one demo and even discovery call to figure out you know your current shipping processes and, and how starship can help um, so on my screen right now is the starship program so one nice thing with starship is as a shipper i can actually just work in the starship program i don't need access to acumatica i don't have to jump back and forth um, and with starship as you see on the main screen here we can pull by sales orders by shipments or even by customer numbers um, so if we wanted to you know maybe we just pull by sales order numbers our shipper would be able to bring in all the sales order header line item detail you know build our packaging rate shop and then actually ship and process and what starship would do of course for the shipper generate all their shipping documents but with the sales order, we're also going to automatically create that shipment record inside of Acumatica and, of course, right back tracking freight amounts, so on and so forth. Um, also, by the shipment record, which I'll just use for the sake of the webinar today, um, you know, of course, if I'm building the shipment inside of Acumatica, you know, I'm in that shipment record, I do the item to box detail, um, that's how Starship's going to bring in the shipment. Now, if I'm not doing that, like, we're, like I'm going to do today, where I'm just going to pick a shipment here, and I'll build the shipment right inside Starship. And as you're going to see, the nice thing with this is however I define that shipment inside Starship is how it's going to be pushed back into Acumatica on that shipment record. All right. So simply, we're just data mapping fields from Acumatica. Um, nice thing with that, it, it, it's just mapping. So if you wanted us to say maybe bring an attribute field or some kind of custom field, it's not like we have to custom program uh, Starship for you. It's very simple. Okay, we just point Starship to that field that you would like us to pull in the additional data. So up top is my source information. Of course, you know, the, the company, the in this case, the shipment number, here's the sales order number, the sender information, automatically all being populated from, from Acumatica. Um, any customer that is out there doing um, blind shipments or drop shipments where you need to show the shipment might be coming from someone else for example here walmart as you see starship fully supports blind or drop shipments we can even automate this process again maybe looking at a certain field inside acumatica to automatically trigger this drop down selection so as a shipper i don't mainly have to do that uh, really as you're going to see with starship name of the game here is to streamline your shipping process so the less things as a shipper i have to click maybe manually type in select of course the better um, recipient information, again, just pulling that information from you know, the sales order, the shipment record. Uh, Starship will do address validation. We validate ZIP plus four. Um, so going to help save on those address correction fees. The transportation information, simply just looking at the ship via that is set up inside of Acumatica. As you see, Starship's automatically going to select carrier service account. Uh, this case, this order was actually my ship via was just UPS ground. Uh, but Starship, we can also default in this Here's an international shipment. So Starship knows, oh, it's going to Canada. So I'm automatically going to select standard to Canada. Okay. So maybe you don't want to set up a UPS standard to Canada and a UPS ground ship via. Again, just using one ship via Starship can automatically populate that information. Billing information, anyone doing third party or collect shipments, we could have Starship set up. It automatically knows, okay, it's third party. It can automatically select in this drop down the customer's account information. With Starship, here's our own database where we can set up in store that customer account information as well as account numbers. Now, I know Acumatica has a spot for this as well, so same thing. If, if you have it set up inside Acumatica, we can simply point to those fields and automatically bring in the data that lives there. All right, for the sake of this, I'm just going to change it back to prepaid. And I'm just going to go to the shipment details. Uh, this is really all our shipment options. 
So the system could be set up. You know, maybe uh, insurance was flagged inside Acumatica. Of course, Starship would bring that in flagged. Uh, we could also automate, automatically populate the declared value. Maybe it's by order total. Maybe it's by shipment value. Um, the paperless invoicing. So if anyone's doing international shipments and they want, in this case, UPS to handle the delivery of those documents, um, of course, we could have that set up. Uh, Quantum View, where um, where uh, UPS would email. Uh, you could also have that set up where it comes in and yes, I want to use UPS Quantum View, and I only want to use that for maybe exceptions. Um, you know, as you see down here, it's automatically flagged. It's automatically bringing in the customer's account emails. And here, my system, I have set it up. Just use the UPS or the carrier generated email if there was a delay or an exception. And I'll show you why my system's set up like that in a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to close this. Uh, ship status, that is if we want to change, you know, maybe we don't want UPS to pick this one up today. And this is just a parcel international shipment. Starship fully supports LTL shipments. Uh, we have integrations with over two dozen LTL carriers. Uh, so I could actually get into building item box pallet detail. And then from here, I can even, you know, maybe I want to tell the carrier not to come until later on in the day. I could also change the pickup date or time. Uh, in the packaging view, so this is where Starship can get into that item box detail, which is not required. Uh, you know, of course, at least we're going have to have to have a wait to ship out a, a box or a package or a pallet. Um, but again, the item detail isn't required. Now here, Starship, this is a packaging scenario. So Starship knows, hey, every time they ship this laptop, they always put it in a box that they've named laptop. So as you see, Starship's automatically packaged this item for me. Now my remaining items, I just have stuff come in, as you see, just goes into my default custom package. Uh, but from here, oh, maybe I know this motherboard can also fit in the laptop box. So I simply drag and drop. And then maybe I know this air hockey table, oh, we're gonna put that in a large box. Okay, the nice thing with using this custom package dropdown, and you can set up your own custom packaging. And again, that can be bags, boxes, bales, pallets, what have you. But the nice thing of doing that is, as you see, we'll automatically populate the dimensions. And then from there, here's my units on shipment. If you allow your shippers to overship, undership, we fully support that. Here's my actual weight. My system, I'm just grabbing that from inside of Acumatica. Of course, if I had a scale integrated, I could automatically grab the weights from a scale or mainly type that in. But next door there, we have the bill weight. So I'm saying this weighs 20 pounds, but according to UPS and dimensional weights, which are a big deal now uh, between UPS, FedEx, even USPS uh, does dimensional weights now, but this is actually gonna be billed at 22 pounds. So when Starship sends this information to UPS, we're gonna send it at the 22 pounds, not 20. So later on, you're not gonna get that correction fee or the correction invoice that says, oh, you sent that one shipment, that box was 20, it should have been 22 pounds. Okay. Line item detail. Uh, with Starship, what we like to do is automatically start storing your inventory items in our own database. So my system, item, description, you know, weights, values, unit of measure, all that's coming from inside of Acumatica. Now, if you don't have maybe freight class or NMFC code set up, that's the nice thing about using also Starship's database. International information, as you can see, country or manufacturer, harmonize or schedule B codes. We have our own lookup where I can look up by the codes, by the descriptions. And of course, any of this information, once I select it and ship this shipment out, Starship will automatically remember it for next time. Now, down below is the rate shopping. So this is live rate shopping. So what Starship's doing is sending out uh, your live contract information to, in this case, UPS, FedEx. I have USPS. Again, if this was an LTL shipment, I would be able to see all the different LTL carriers, or maybe I'm using a third party or broker service. Uh, we also integrate with them as well. But I'd be able to see all my different carriers, all my different service options. And over here is a list. So that's the published list rate. Contract. That's my live negotiated rate. Now, of course, these are just demo accounts, so the two are the same. And then we also have applied charge. So applied charge is plus or minus either your list or contract charge, any freight rules, if you have freight rules set up. Now, with the rating, again, I can scroll down here and manually make a change. I could sort by any of these columns, um, but I could also set up Starship to automatically do the rating. So technically, we have some clients that do a ship via that's called best way and then they have starship set up that okay starship you automatically rate shop my shipment and i want you to always select the least expensive or maybe least expensive least amount of business days or total days 
Okay, so that whole process can be automated as well. Up under total charges, as you see, just a breakdown of the charges. You know, maybe I want to see, oh, yep, I got a $5.62 uh, 62 cent surcharge. Uh, but when I click under the apply, this is where I can see freight rules. So in my system, as you see, I have a couple set up. Uh, here I'm giving this customer, because it is this one customer, a 10% discount. So freight rules can be percentages, min maxes, it could be flat rates. Um, and then my second rule here, oh, looks like uh, we're shipping a computer, this laptop. Hey, that's fragile, so we have to use additional packaging material. So anytime we're shipping a computer or this laptop, let's add a, an additional $5 to help cover that uh, additional packaging material. Okay, so as you see, very a lot of flexibility with those freight rules and, and like I call them the criteria or trigger fields. Again, we can look at Acumatica fields, attribute fields to trigger these freight rules. Now, I kind of drag out this shipment process showing you all the different options, but uh, usually a shipper brings in the shipment. Uh, maybe they do some live rating. Again, maybe get into item box detail, but when they're ready, uh, they can just then click the ship and process button, or I can come up in the shipment drop down. And as you see, we have shortcut keys. I can save a shipment. Maybe I'm staging it. Maybe I need also a return label. I can do that in one click. But here, we're just going to click ship and process. And now what Starships right now is doing, it's pinging UPS in this case, telling them, hey, here's all the shipment details. UPS is going to return back a certified label. That's the same for FedEx shipments as well. Um, if this was LTL, Starship could generate bill lading forms, pallet labels. And here, for the sake of the demo, I'm previewing all my documents. Of course, in a live environment, these would just print right out. I'm also using our smart label. And as you can see, a smart label would generate a sh uh, shipping label and packing list together. Most certainly can send shipping labels to a thermal printer or printers. And Starship's packing list can also go to a thermal printer if you choose. And of course, we can also send it to a laser printer. Uh, so box one, box two, documents can be customized. So um, unlimited templates with those customizations. And on, on each customization, you can also assign printing rules. So again, maybe this was for Walmart. Walmart wants their logo on there. I could create a, a template it just has Walmart's logo and then set up the rule that says only use this if the shipment is for Walmart. Uh, commercial invoices, again, we can generate these, bill lading forms if this was LTL, as I mentioned. Uh, also, NAFTA forms or certificate of origins. In my documents, you know, by default, all the order header line and detail is going to generate, but mine, I've actually, they're signed, they're dated, the name's there. Um, that way, again, as a shipper, I don't have to stop and manually fill out any of this information. And then real quick, again, you're gonna, your shipper's going to click Ship and Process. They'll go back to the main shipment screen here, rinse, repeat, kind of go through that cycle again. And I'll quickly jump back into Acumatica, show you the right back. So as you see, see here, uh, shipment 1426 is the one we just shipped. Um, now it's confirmed, and I'll drill down into it. Again, it's going to be confirmed on the shipping settings. Here's my freight cost, so that's what the carrier is charging me. And here's the freight price is what I'm charging the customer. On the packaging tab, there's my reverse translation for the box ID or those packages that I used. Here's my tracking information. Again, down below is the line item detail of what I put in each box. And custom reference one and two, that's up to you. I'm currently doing the uh, actual bill weight and the um, carrier returned uh, estimated delivery time and date. Um, and then also with Starship, you can do custom notes. So here I just have one quickly set up. It's doing ship weight, package, tracking information, but you can completely customize that as well. All right. So again, brief over that, that's the right back. Uh, real quick, two other features that are included with Starship, one being our dashboard program, and these require no additional seats or licenses. So a nice thing with dashboard, usually everyone in the front office uses dashboard. Uh, here, as you see, we have a heat map. Uh, but we also have a bunch of performance indicators. Maybe I want to run some reports. Here's some statuses, and I can drill down, get tracking information. So a lot of our clients, they have this. Everyone in the front office uses that. Um, and then also our e-notify program. So I might have to log back in here. Nope. Um, so this is why a lot of our customers, they just use the carrier-generated emails for exceptions because that you can create your own custom email. Uh, very easy to create these, you know, pull an Acumatica fields, PO, sales order, let them know how it's being shipped, where it's going. Again, item to box detail, 
hyperlink tracking numbers that would take them back to the carrier's website. Estimated delivery date, you know, that's coming from the carrier, so that's accurate. And with the emails, again, just like the printing documents, unlimited templates, but instead of printing rules, you can also get into emailing rules. Okay. So again, brief, quick overview, and if you want further information or one-on-one -on -one call demo discovery, again, please feel free to reach out to me. And with that, I'm going to hand this over to Patty. Thank you, Matt and Jessica. Great presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, we are all consumers ourselves, right? And we're looking for automation, security, and, and of course, compliance. Before I jump into the demo, I just want to introduce the team. And you can see us on the screen. The reason I like to show this picture is not just because we're all gorgeous, but also because the diversity in our team is incredible. Not only the cultures, but also the level of expertise that supports APS. We have in-house developers, people that have, that have worked with our back-end banks, so all of them from the credit card processing industry. We definitely have top-of-the-line credit card processing industry experts. And that hot girl in the white right over here, that's me. And I come from the channel. So a good understanding of channel, our partners, and the ERP system in general. The point that I want to make with this picture more than anything is the fact that you won't have to go to multiple providers in order to obtain assistance with credit card processing. So. What's new in the exciting world of credit card processing? If you've been multitasking, this is the part that you really, really have to stop and listen to because APS can actually help you to offset the cost of the manufacturing solution as well as Starship. If you're interested, I'm going to let you know throughout this presentation exactly what you have to do to offset the cost of both of these solutions and also help with paying for Acumatica in general. Um, it all begins with understanding your current statement and the fee structures that are available to you. There is tons of flexibility when it comes to the type of fee structure that you will choose for your business. This is something that many processors do not like to share with the merchant. Why? Because it puts the power in your hands and takes it away from them. What you see on the screen are the three types of fee structures that will help you to understand where exactly the fees are coming from and who is getting paid the different fees. So we'll talk about how the bank, the card brand, and the processor make the money here. Let's talk about the flat rate. This is the most convenient. I think it's the most popular. Many people will come to us with a flat rate contract and ask us to beat or match, but they don't want to change. And it's very comfortable to take on the flat rate contract because the reconciliation is easy. You get one flat percentage plus a transaction fee and no other fees. The setback is, you are not able to take advantage of programs that the card brands put in place to help you to save money. Instead of you taking advantage, guess who gets to keep that money? The processor. So flat rate, you may want to think about it because let me tell you, there are many programs out there that you could be taking advantage of and saving money where with the flat rate contract, it just limits you to not be able to take advantage at all. Then there's a fee structure called tiered pricing. We run into this every so often where a processor will create three different buckets. One would be qualified, non-qualified, and mid-qualified. Now, this is okay because you kind of know the type of transactions you're going to be receiving, the volume, and you can negotiate with the processor, hey, if it's mid-qualified, it'll be at a certain rate, fully another rate, and of course, non-qualified will be the highest rate. Believe it or not, we've analyzed thousands of tiered price statements, and the result is that 99% of the time, the transactions are non-qualified. When we ask the merchant what the criteria is behind the qualification, the merchant really doesn't understand what the criteria is. So it leaves the door open for the processor to take advantage and, of course, qualify the transactions wherever they would like, and mainly they fall under the non-qualified bucket. So again, money being left on the table, not taking advantage of level three processing, and on top of that, transactions are being non-qualified. The last fee structure is Interchange Plus, and I have to say last but not least, Interchange Plus is the most transparent type of fee structure. Why? 
because in this case, the processor is saying, look, we're going to pass the hard cost from the card brand directly to you, and let's negotiate a markup fee. That is it. That means you will be able to take advantage of the card brand program anytime because you have the Interchange Plus contract that stipulates you have to get the hard cost from the card brand. So that will bring you a level of savings that you have never seen in the past with the other fee structures. So this is really important. We want to make sure all of our merchants understand this. We provide educational sessions, not only regarding the fee structures, but also regarding PCI compliance and the risks behind the PCI compliance itself. We also like to talk about level three processing. And if you've not heard this term, don't worry, 80% of American companies have not. Uh, but just so you get an idea, level three processing is a program that was put in place by Visa and MasterCard right around 2012, where they offer to lower the rates in half when you accept corporate or government cards. Sometimes the rate can go lower than half depending on the volume of the transaction. We've seen rates go as low as 0.05%. The average savings for an Acumatica user is about $18,000 a year, and this is going on the low end. The highest we've ever been able to save an Acumatica user has been $412,000 a year. You heard me correctly. That is $412,000 a year. Now, of course, this is depending on the volume of the account, but regardless of the volume, you know that there is money being left on the table. You have to become curious and want to find out how much money you can potentially be saving simply by processing through Acumatica and taking advantage of the level three rate. And I will show you exactly what has to be done in order to take advantage of level three. Visa and MasterCard require 13 to 16 data fields in order to qualify a transaction for level three processing. These are the fields you see on the screen. When you submit the field, it instantly brings back a notification letting you know if it qualifies, your rate is lowered. If not, your rate is a standard rate. And if you're going through the interchange plus fee structure, then of course you know you're getting the exact hard cost from the card brand. Now, no one has time to key in all of these fields. So what we've done with the integration to Acumatica is we actually take the fields directly out of Acumatica, deliver them to Visa and MasterCard on your behalf, and get you the very lowest rate possible. Take a look at an analysis of a statement that was provided to us from an actual merchant. This merchant had a tiered structure contract with their processor. They averaged about $128,000 a month in, in volume. And take a look at the Visa mid-qualified and non-qualified transactions. Again, we asked, how do you determine? There were no qualified. There were only mid and none. So we asked the criteria. They didn't understand it. We placed them in the Interchange Plus fee structure. We were able to save them money with Interchange Plus, but even more with Level 3 processing. If you see the bottom right, we were able to save them a little bit over $1,000 a month. 30% savings. No strings attached, no changes made to their workflow process. All they had to do was process within Acumatica. Now, many people will ask us, why not just keep processing using Authorize.net? Authorize.net has fees involved as well as functionality that is not available if you process with Authorize.net. Now the fees you'll see on the screen, the functionality, very simple. They do not offer level three processing. Online payments are not available at all. This is something that APS offers at no additional charge through the integration with Acumatica. Now I'm gonna be showing you and walking you through a click to pay presentation, but I do wanna point out the fact that the functionality with Acumatica within Acumatica um, remains very straightforward. In Acumatica, you're able to create cards, as many cards per customer as you'd like under your customer payment methods. You will simply use the APS window, key in the card information. We will tokenize the card information stored in our secured vault for PCI compliance. We also have a PCI compliance team dedicated exclusively to making sure you become and then remain PCI compliance, and this is all included at no additional charge. Now notice how 
In addition to the card information, you can also add an email address per card. And this email address can be set up to receive a receipt whenever you complete a transaction. You can process transactions within sales orders, invoices, and payments and applications. Now, you can process individually or in batches. And then in payments and applications, you can actually accept multiple payment types per invoice. Now, instead of walking you through all of the process here, uh, processing transactions within each one of these areas, I wanted to jump right into the click to pay. Click to pay will allow you to add a click to pay button to the body of an invoice that is sent via Acumatica as soon as you print it out. And you can print out an individual invoice or in batches, right? So when your customer receives the email, they will have invoices attached. Once they click on the invoice on the PDF, they will receive a custom form. The custom form, as it says, it's customizable. You can add your logo. The font size and color can be changed. And this is the part that's really important, the click to pay button. So step over to your customer side of things for just a few minutes here. Your customer is going to receive the invoice, view the details, and decide they're ready to pay online right then and there. They click on the click to pay button, and what they'll see is this. And it takes a few seconds um, on my end because my internet connection is a little bit slow, so I apologize ahead of time. But what they'll see is detail regarding the specific invoice that you sent them. It's not always necessary for the customer to receive an invoice. While uh, the customer can access the click to pay using that invoice, they can also then access click to pay, and this is optional, by going directly to the portal. You can send them a link. They will create their login credentials, and they'll be able to see the portal that you see on the screen at this moment. Now, because they clicked on the invoice originally, they'll be able to see the detail regarding that specific invoice, as you can see here. The portal will also allow them to view any of their existing invoices and drill down to each invoice and view the detail. They can pay, in, they can pay full amount or custom amount per invoice, as you can see here. And as I'm checking off the invoices, we will auto increment the total. They can also, based on your criteria and the options that you set up, accept not only credit card payments, but also ACH payments. This is the part where if they use the click to pay invoice originally to have access to the invoice, they'll be asked if they want to save their payment for future use. If they click on this, this is where they will get the login credentials for the portal, so they do not have to receive an invoice every time they want to access the portal. They simply can go to the link, they'll have their login information, and instantly have access to the portal. One of the features that we're going to be adding before the end of this quarter is the ability to add a cash discount. What this means is that the vendor will no longer have to pay the credit card processing fees. They can pass those fees along to their customers. The way it works is in the portal itself, we will outline the percentage that has to be paid if they decide to pay via credit card instead of ACH. So let's just say it's a 2.5 percentage. The 2.5 will be captured, sent directly to ATS, while the total payment of the credit card, the exact uh, total of the credit card for the item will go back into Acumatica. And I'm going to show you what that information will look like in Acumatica. Now, notice how when the customer decided to make their payment, they were sent to the screen that asks for their credit card information. If they've used Click to Pay in the past, they will only have to fill in three fields. Otherwise, it'll be four fields, and then they can submit their card. The transaction goes through our gateway. The, the card information is tokenized. If there are any discrepancies, the user will see pop-up windows indicating invalid address, invalid CDD code. If the transaction goes through, they will get a success notification like this one. You can also set up the system to send your customer the receipt after they make their payment via click to pay And it's a standard credit card looking type of receipt. Now back in Acumatica, how exactly do you accept the payment? In the banking menu, you're going to notice a process click to pay payment. You can manually process the transaction as an option, but the best part here is we've eliminated the need for you to manually key in anything if you don't want to. You can simply use the automation schedule 
set it up daily, weekly, however you prefer. If you do set it up for weekly to capture the funds that were paid via Click to Pay, we will also set you up to auto batch each night. If you batch out by 9 p.m. Eastern, the funds will be available in your bank account the next morning by 8 a.m. In this case, I'm going to complete our transaction manually just to show you where the transaction ends up in Acumatica. I'm catch, capturing the funds. You'll notice I haven't really done anything outside of the ordinary. If I go back to my receivable payments and applications, I will be able to see that my transaction is complete. This is our transaction right now. It's closed. And I will also be able to see that the payment was made using click to pay Now, ladies and gentlemen, click to pay is included at, again, at absolutely no charge with our services. We provide our software, installation, implementation, training, maintenance, and support at no charge. We make our money when we negotiate the transaction fees with you. We also integrate to thousands of shopping carts, um, e-commerce solutions, and I listed a few here on the screen, point of sale solutions, mobile solutions. This is something that we've done for our merchants. Anytime our merchants are in need of an integration to a specific third-party solution, I think APS is the best to go to because we will work with you and make sure that the credit card processing runs smoothly from Acumatica to that third party and APS. Now I mentioned all of the items that we provide for free, and I'm, I'm just wanting to show you the PowerPoint version of it because I think it's important that you remember there really are no other fees other than the fees that we negotiate with you initially when we provide you with the quote. So if you are interested in a free audit of your current rates and fees, and again, get curious, find out if you're leaving money on the table, we can show you no strings attached. Simply send us two copies of your most recent merchant statement. We will analyze them, provide you with an overview of the savings and why, where exactly we found the savings, and then you can make your decision. Take the challenge. If we are not able to beat or match any competitors' rates and fees, we will pay you $500 for simply allowing us to audit your statements. And last but not least, wanted to mention that APS is sponsoring the Acumatica user groups. We hope to see everybody in Seattle next week and in future user groups. Oh, the, the next future group is also going to be in Atlanta at our corporate office. Happy to host it. That one's going to be on March 10th. If you haven't registered, please do so today. Thank you so much, and I'd like to hand it back over to you, Adrian. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. We hope to see you next week on uh, uh, Acumatica Summit 5 Key Takeaways with Jeff Ashley. Everybody take care.